Hello friends, it's Astro here and welcome to The Last Starship. Uh, this game is currently in early access. Uh, it's brought to you by uh, the crew behind uh, Prison Architect, among other games, Introversion. And you know that I've got a soft spot for this, uh, this studio, for these guys, for the games that they produce. I absolutely enjoy them. Um, in this video, I would like to just run through and give you a bit of a... Um, just an intro into how to get started in the game. There's a whole bunch of other stuff that we can look into, like building your own ship in creative mode, downloading ships from the Steam Workshop, and so forth. But in this one, I just want to do a nice basic, let's get a ship off the ground, so to speak, and begin our missions in the game. So let's go for a new game. Uh, there are a number of ships that we can choose from here. But I'm just going to go with Praxis, which is the best one for new players. And it's the best one to start with because it gives you an idea of what you're doing in the game. So I can middle click and pan around. Um, my docking port's extending because a shuttle is coming to deliver my crew. And I already have a bunch of boxed items here that I'm going to need to get this ship up and running. So let's go ahead and get started with some basic things. Now... In order to get our ship ready for flight, we're going to need a reactor to generate power. We're going to need some engines to propel the ship about. We're going to need to uh, get into the tactical screen and test the engines. Uh, we need some life support so that our people can breathe without the assistance of spacesuits. An FTL drive so that we can make hyperspace jumps. And then we need to jump to the marked destination. So let's go ahead and get those things up and running. So the first thing we need is a reactor and it's giving us a little diagram here of where these things need to go. Now you don't need to put them here, you can put them wherever you fancy, but for the purposes of this, let's follow um, the instructions that the system, that the game is giving us. So we're going to go into our construction menu here and select install. Uh, we're going to select our reactor, which is here. Uh, and you can see it highlighted on the top right hand side of the screen there where that boxed item is. And when I select to plop this down, one of the crew members is gonna go and grab that, bring it over and install it where it needs to go. Now, a reactor is going to generate power for the ship, but it needs fuel. And we have fuel uh, sitting about here in these yellow canisters, and it needs to be loaded into the, uh, the engine via a fuel loader. So if we place that one there, again, one of the crew members is going to grab that, and they're gonna load that there. They're also gonna go and grab some fuel and plop it into the loader, but it's not gonna do very much just yet because we need a pipe to pipe that fuel from the fuel loader across this way, and then into the reactor, which is going to slowly fill up with fuel until it hits full. And then it'll kick off and start generating power, which we can use to run the ship. Now, that's a good start. We've got some power, we can use that to do things that we need to do. The next thing we need to really think about is let's get our crew out of their spacesuits because well, they're not gonna, they're not gonna be able to survive too long in said suits. So let's go ahead and install a, uh, a uh, air duct, which is what we use to provide oxygen for our people. I'm gonna put that eh, just about here. Again, it doesn't really matter where you put these things. You can put them wherever you want in a different room. Um, there are some, some advanced tips that we can get into later on, but for now, we're just gonna plop that there. We will then use an oxygen loader and we'll put that next to that. And we're going to go ahead and set some pipes up so that this pipe's end are there. It's also going to need a cable for power, which we can connect up. And we'll connect that to the reactor. I also like running my power down the length of the ship like this, just so that it's easy to branch the power off to the things that you need. Now, one of the guys is going to grab some oxygen here and plonk it in. It's then going to get pumped out via the air duct and provide atmosphere for our crew. And we can actually see that in the overlay view here. If we look at atmosphere, you can see at the moment it's red, but it's slowly filling up, providing oxygen that our crew are going to be able to breathe. Uh, there are some other things that we're going to need to worry about later on, like filtering out the CO2 that's in, uh, the, that's in the ship. I mean, our people are going to exhale uh, the air that they're breathing, and we will need to deal with that. But we won't cover that in this tutorial. We're just going to do the basics. So those are the two basic things that we can look into to get a ship up and running. 
However, there's a few more things. Like when this oxygen tank runs dry, this air duct is going to stop running. There are ways that we can make that a little more efficient. And usually what I like to do is have a small tank, all right, and we can put that right about here. And if we connect that with a pipe to the oxygen, then what's going to happen is this oxygen oxygen will also fill into this tank so that we're not just reliant on these little ch uh, tanks to keep the system running. This thing will fill up and basically keep the air duct running for longer. Now, the same goes as well. We've got a medium tank here. We may as well make a use of that. And if we place that up here next to the reactor, it should automatically connect to the pipe that uh, that this uh, fuel pipe is, is, uh, is using and it's going to fill up with fuel. So it means that when one of these runs dry, the reactor and the engines don't just shut down, which is, yeah, you don't want that. Now, in addition to having these things here, it's nice to have the things, uh, the, the consumables that you're working with stored close to where you need them. So for example, if I want to store my fuel right next to the fuel loader, I can create a storage zone here and my crew are going to go and grab that fuel and place it right next to the fuel loader so that they don't need to walk as far to get it where it needs to go. The same goes with oxygen. We can have a little, uh, a little zone here for where we want our oxygen to be stored. And it means that they'll just be running it back and forward down here. The final thing that we need to think about uh, is propulsion. And there's two types of propulsion in this game. There are engines, and they, these are your sublight, like your impulse engines, right? Um, and we can install those anywhere. Uh, so I could put them on the tips like this. I could actually put them sort of in here as well and leave these sort of sections at the top here free for future engines or guns or what have you. Um, I'm actually gonna put them on the tips up here like this. Um, most things in this game can be rotated with R. That is not the case with engines. They can only point to the left, um, but that's okay. We don't need to worry about that too much. Um, engines require both power and fuel in order to operate. So what we're gonna do, and you'll see the red dots here on the engines, that's the power point. So we can connect those up with some power. And they also require fuel, so we'll bring those up connect them up into the uh, fuel line here and cross them like that. One big thing to note though, uh, when it comes to uh, cables and pipes, um, cables and pipes can cross over one another, that's fine. But when it comes to pipes of different types, so I've got an oxygen line here, oh no, I've now connected my oxygen line to my fuel line and therefore the oxygen system will cease to function. So you do need to be careful about where you place things so that you're not crossing fuel, oxygen, water, etc., over one another because that will lead to um, non-functional pipes. So we now have engines and we can do some sub sublight maneuvering. Um, and in order to do that, what we can do is we can go into tactical view. So if we go into... Um, uh, if we press T, <laughs> I'm sure there's a way. Uh, oh, yes, we can click tactical up here, or we can press T to go into tactical view. And from here, we can see my vessel, science vessel. We can see Starbase Icarus over here, and we can see like a, 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 a reticule here, which tells me how far away something is. Now, there's a couple of different ways that we can maneuver. I can uh, right-click on a location, and the engines will fire up, and they'll move us where we need to go until we get close to that location and then the engines will automatically throttle down and we'll stop at that point. The other way that we can maneuver is we can uh, use page up and page down to throttle up and throttle down or we can press the plus button here to go full throttle and then we can left click to set a vector in, you know, a direction in which we want to fly. Uh, and again, we could just throttle down to zero when we're done. Uh, so this is the screen that we'll go into when we need to do any uh, combat, any docking, anything like that. Um, and we can hop out of that and we'll zoom back in on our ship. Okay, so 
that's our sublight capability taken care of. The next thing that we need to look into is installing our FTL drives. This is the final component to having a ship that can get places. Um, let's put that up the front of the ship because why not? So I'll rotate it around so that it can, uh, it can be uh, connected to the existing power line. And again, let's get some storage for my FTL chargers and we can place that right next to it. The crew is going to install that sucker there. It is currently offline. It'll charge up with power and it's also going to need to have one of these FTL chargers loaded in, uh, which the crew will do right now. And it's ready to go. All we need to do now is set a destination and jump. So to do that, we need to go to the sector map and the destination is already laid out for us. Our fleet is here at NC1 and the game wants us to go to NC7. There are other locations we can jump to. Uh, so we could jump over here and take on some hostiles. Uh, we could jump over here, uh, although there is a system in the way of that. Um, jumping to here would then let us jump on to the next sector. But again, we won't worry about that today. Let's just complete the initial tutorial. So we'll select this by clicking on it. Uh, it's going to show a, a dotted line and it'll flash to show that that is our intended destination. Uh, we can pull up our FTL uh, window and it says that our science vessel is currently ready to jump. We have seven charges remaining. Let's prepare that jump. Uh, we are going to align in the correct uh, orientation. And when we're all aligned and ready to go, all we need to do is hit jump. And that's it. That's the basics of the game. From here, we can get into the rest of what's happening. We can pull up the trade window to buy new reactors, more tanks. We might buy some more fuel. We can hire more crew. Uh, we can buy oxygen and bullets and all that sort of stuff. We've also got weapons that we can purchase. Uh, there are contracts available for us. So for example, I might take the mission to analyze the anomaly, uh, which is one of the big parts of this game. There is an anomaly that is slowly uh, uh, expanding and absorbing the galaxy and there doesn't seem to be any way to stop it. Uh, we could take the mission to evacuate civilians from the anomaly, or we could take the, uh, the special mission to become a self-sufficient fleet. Uh, and in order to become a self-sufficient fleet, we could be looking at, okay, well, maybe I'll buy another science vessel. Of course, we only have $50,000, so we can't afford to buy that just yet. Finally, at the moment, my ship is currently named Science Vessel, which is rather a bland name. So what I can do is jump into the editor. Um, I could do some modification on this ship, and because the, uh, the sector we're at is a shipyard, I can modify this ship here. Um, but what I want to do is just give it a name. So let's call this the, um, let's call this the beginner. And that's that. So there you go. That's the basics of the uh, the basics of the game. Um, we have actually, by accepting the anomaly mission, we've been given some hyperspace sensors. So we can go ahead and install those. Uh, we have two, and they can go anywhere on the external uh, areas of the hull. And all these suckers need is some power to make them run. And the next time we jump through hyperspace, it's gonna gather data on the anomaly and the research institute is going to give us money based on the amount of data that we collect. So it is definitely a really good way to earn cash along with the other contracts that are available, like for example, tra uh, transporting passengers or delivering cargo. Later on, we might do some, uh, some mining as well. Um, and there is also a, uh, 
go and destroy hostile forces. But yeah, that's the basics of the game, friends. Um, if you found this useful, do let me know. I'll make some more of these if, uh, if you think that that would be helpful. Or maybe I should do a full playthrough. Let me know what you think. Um, and as usual, if it's your first time here, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I hope you have a lovely day. Thanks, friends.